It's, it's in my leg. It's in the cut of my leg like this. <laughs> I start taking it myself after like three days when I wake up. Come the hands we are a day like this. I can't turn, I can't no can see my leg. I say, uh uh What happened to my leg? They say bomb blast happened to Emma Plaza. It's in cut off my leg. Without legs, I will be so happy because since I lost my mom, it hasn't been easy for me because ten years have passed. Yet the memories of the Emma Plaza bomb blast remain vivid in the hearts of those affected. Today we stand at Emma Plaza in Wusi Abuja to hear the story of those who remember that fateful day, the 25th of June, 2014. Follow the other side, follow the other side. Nobody know waiting there inside the car. Before we know, the thing just shoots boo like this. As I stand up now, I saw the thing just jack me like this. Now, sir, they rotate, they rotate, they say, Jesus, 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 before you know the thing, come land me for grant. So, as the thing, you see all this wound, why I get like this? As the thing land me for grant, I saw blood, for even my head, I get wound. All this thing, all this thing. Now, sir, I use hand, they remove blood, they remove blood, they remove blood. I, I like, I see they feel myself, but, even this my leg self, I never even know so anything happened to me. Cause that kind of thing no good no. So I they remove blood, I they remove as I raise my head up, I see all my colleagues, everybody just lie lie down like this. One woman went there near the gate, the thing just remove the skull immediately. The other one lie down, the other one, now so they lie down, don't let me just they raise my head, they remove blood like this. Even person will even help me, now person will still get the injury. You know, now for belly driver like this, but there's the, the way when they park car for the front, like a fire from this one to this one, from fire just they come and they look, but I know if he get up, I know if he, now the man just come help me, jack me, carry me, reach that old banner's gates as the man come drop me there. Now so police come, they come, people come, they come, then say this one still that life, or this one still that life. Now so then bring that police vehicle, put me for the the boots. I know that time as they put me for the motor, I know. Then carry me reach Matama General Hospital. I still know that time. First, we speak with Mrs. Gloria, who had lost one of her legs in the incident. She described how the blast occurred on that awful day. Another victim we spoke with is Aze Evelyn, a teenager at the time, whose life was forever altered by the devastating attack. She shares her recollections of that tragic day, recounting the loss of her mother, her cousin and dear friend, Oye. I'm the only child of my late parents. I lost my dad when I was 11 years old. And I lost my mom 25th June. 2014, last 10 years, in Emma Bomblas, she was in this plaza selling banana, and I was working in the plaza here. So on that day, I the last time I saw my mom was around after three, after three to four. So my boss sent me to go and give a customer phone. So after giving the customer phone, I went outside to greet my mom and her colleagues. They were all selling banana. They were four women. So after greeting them, there was a man carrying golf. The man was wearing uh, this uh, combat short knicker and black polo with face cap. So he was carrying ash color golf. So he wanted to drive inside from the entrance. So the security, because there was go slow, this Emma Plaza, a lot of customers come in and out. So there was go slow. So the man tried to pass through the exit gate and the security there stopped the man. So when I was coming inside the plaza, because I went outside the plaza. So when I was coming in, the security stopped the man and some other people was like, 
go back, go and follow the entrance, all those things. And there was one guy selling orange. His name is um, uh, Sule. So the guy said, go back. You this Boko Haram, go back. It's as if the man knew what was going on. So the man just said, you this Boko Haram. So at that time, it was some minutes past four. So I just took some fruit from that malam and we greeted. So when I came there, there's one of my colleagues, Onine, she died, we didn't see her body, but she was at that spot. So she was there listening to everything. So I was standing watching and I was like, go back now, don't put this security man into problem. So the man didn't go back. They were just arguing, go back, don't go back. And I just left. Immediately I entered the shop. So I heard a sound. And I was like, one of my colleagues said, maybe somebody tire just explode. I said, no, this cannot be tire. This is bomb blast. He said, why did I say bomb blast? So we we're arguing about it. And we all came out, see people running, fire everywhere. And I was shouting that my mom is outside that gate. So I was rushing outside gate to check my mom. When one guy that knew me, heard me, said, Kai Evelyn, don't go there because the fire there is too much. The guy drew me back and we fly the fence. Evelyn narrates how the lack of immediate rescue operations and the functional hospital led to her mother's death as she was taken to the hospital alive, although fatally wounded. We couldn't come close to where that bomb blast happened. So my mommy cousin died there. My mom died. Although my mom got to the hospital alive, but due to Nigerian hospitals, they were not fast enough. They took her to my Tama. My Tama is filled up. They went to other hospitals. I didn't know the name, but the last hospital was National Hospital. And from that yesterday till the next day, she died on 26. They didn't attend to her. I went, I saw her in the hospital. There was a machine. She was like, uh, they, they are trying to, she had internal injury. They are trying to remove the blood before they could go to surgery. That she hit her head on the stone and there's some irons inside her head. Gloria says she woke up after being in a coma for three days, only to be awakened with a forever scar of losing one of her legs. An injury, she says, has not been able, a reality that she has not been able to get over. Due to the injury she sustained, she's forced to stay at home all the time, something she detests but cannot fight. Now after three, like three days or two days safe, why oh, I wake up, now I can't see myself like this. <laughs> I can't see it. It's in my leg. It's in the cut of my leg like this. <laughs> I start taking it myself after like three days. Oh, I wake up. Come the ask we are a day like this. I can't turn. I can't no can see my leg. I say, uh uh. What happened to my leg? They say bomb blast happened to Emma Plaza. It's in cut off my leg. So now so I can't see myself. Since that time I just they just they they manage my life inside house every day they cry. Evelyn's story echoes the pain and resilience of many affected by the blast. However, the scars run deeper than physical wounds. Evelyn reveals the challenges she faces as some people still stereotype her based on the unfortunate incident she endured. My mom would have been alive even with, without legs. I would be so happy because since I lost my mom, it has not been easy for me because I was supposed to finish my school but because of that, I couldn't finish my education so I started working. And since then, this has been very hard for me but I thank God. I'm managing, sir. I thank God. You know, so many people, my colleague, who didn't see her, that particular Onyinye, who didn't see her, I told them that Onyinye was at that place, at that spot, because we were calling her number for days. Her number keeps ringing till three days. The phone went off. We also spoke with the chief security officer of Emma Plaza, Musa 
who witnessed the incident. He also lost a colleague that day. His survival, he believes, was nothing short of a miracle. Security now come, ask, come call me. I'll be, I'm the one with the supervisor at that time. So as the guy come call me, I come talk to them. Make them follow the other side. The no agree. I just come back. One man come. Ask me if I know who done the call Victor. I help him to go and collect a house charger and the car charger. If I know where Victor shop, they I tell him, say, yes, Victor shop if on that staircase for C block. I'm on my way going there. I just go collect the charger. The charger never complete. I come give the ogre inside his motor. Victor tell me, I come back, come collect one. He want go collect another one to someone shop. So I come give the man. I am on my way going to come collect the remaining one. Now I come here the bombless by him. Me and my Aaron follow another place. Yeah, that's my, that my second, my follow uh, security guy for there. Him, Janata. Janata, the boy from Kogi. Him die. Only him be the security way there. But the people that then die, they are both people are selling fruit, people are selling banana, people are selling granite. Many, many people where they, they are then they plenty. Even one of my friends will be, him name be Ibrahim. Him, they sell handset for. Somebody, somebody has, you know, from A, the shop is A, A7. That guy is on the way to going most that time. The thing come affect him too. He died. Another witness, Mr. Joseph, a shop owner in Banex Plaza nearby, shares his account of the bomb blast from his office. His recollections offer a glimpse into the chaos and devastation of that fateful day. About the bomb that burst at uh, Emma Plaza about 10 years ago, this is my office, and um, I was here when the thing happened. Uh, it's unfortunate that that thing happened that very day, but um, well, thank God we, some of us survived it, survived it and no problem as for us. In that day, it was around 2.30 to 4 o'clock, between 2.30, 2.30, 3 or 4 o'clock that time, when the thing happened. So unfortunately, most of the awesome ladies or women that are selling products like fruits over there, they lost their life with their children. And then, um, on this our side, for almost uh, three weeks, we didn't open this our shop. This very banner plaza was closed down. This very old banner plaza was closed down for almost three weeks. So, well, there's nothing. We only thank God for we are alive. We are alive. And uh, for those souls that lost their life, they are so rest in peace. Despite the shadow of loss that follows Evelyn's every step, she finds solace in the memories of her mother. Although she also faces stereotypes from people who keep the unfortunate bomb blast incident as a reference point when trying to interact her. A painful incident that has sadly become a tag name. I feel terrible because anywhere I go, like there was one, the last um, dedication I went to at um, his birthday at, um, at the Lugbe side. One man, for a very long time, that man, he always come to my office to greet me. So immediately that man saw me there, he was like, oh, Evelyn, don't you remember Evelyn, the one that the mom died at bomb blast? I was happy there, but hearing of that, you know, that name attached to me, that lady that the mom died in bomb blast. To the extent I, you know, sometimes I don't like going somewhere because people always, they don't, I know I work in an office, you can say, ah, Evelyn from Ugosam or former Evelyn from Bluetooth. I'm the only Evelyn in this plaza. You can identify me as Evelyn because I know so many people in this plaza, they know me. The only people that don't know me in this plaza is people that, that are just coming because I've been working here since 2011. So I stopped working from two, uh, 2017 stroke 219 again. I started working with Ugo Sam. Yes. 
So, so many people know me here. So, why can't you just say, do you know Evelyn that works in Bluetooth or that is working currently in Ugosam? They were identifying me like Evelyn that the mom died in bomb blast. So, I don't like that name, but there's nothing I can do about it. And that's a wrap on our special reports on the victims and witnesses of the Emma Plaza bomb blast, 10 years on. We extend our heartfelt gratitude to Evelyn, Gloria, CSO Musa, Mr. Joseph, and all those who shared their stories. May their strength and resilience continue to inspire us all. And may the souls of the departed rest in peace. <laughs>